Randy Orton has backstage heat. WWE nearly kill one wrestler's career. Disputes over a major WWE change and more. I'm Ollie Davis and this is the WrestleTalk News. Support WrestleTalk! Randy Orton's grown a lot in the last few years. Just look at him physically. He looks as though Randy Orton ate Randy Orton as a protein supplement. But he's also grown as a man. There used to be rumours of him dumping pranks in people's bags, hazing new writers and having multiple wellness policy suspensions. Yet in recent years, he's repaired his relationship with the returning CM Punk, has admitted he used to do dumb S-word behind the scenes and generally seems very demure, very mindful. Did I use that right? So it's odd to see him get dragged into a story of backstage heat in 2024, implying what I'm about to tell you could be a good old-fashioned working McWork face. At SummerSlam earlier this month, Logan Paul was accompanied down to the ring by his fellow Cleveland native, the rapper Machine Gun Kelly. Now, appearing on Logan's implosive podcast, Kelly claims he had a verbal altercation with Orton before the show began. I was in the ring, just coming to Logan to see what we could work out for the show. I saw Randy Orton. I remember seeing Randy Orton talk shit about me. There is a point where I was like, I'm going to practice a new version of myself. Three two, one, f**k that, hey man, f**k you. All my boys were sitting there stunned. Is this real? I don't know what's happening. The amount of people that pinned me as the aggressor in every situation I'm in are so wrong. Randy Orton replied to Kelly's podcast comments by tagging him with a Pinocchio nose emoji, insinuating he's a liar liar pants on fire. To which Kelly replied, You have my number and you know why you have it by the way, but I won't even put you on blast for that. Check your texts. Pinocchio emoji right back. Cameras were rolling. Tell WWE to put that out. Shruggy emoji. Detective eyeglass emoji. Pinocchio emoji again. Orton's recent tag partner, Kevin Owens, provided backup, posting a picture of him and Orton together and another of Paul and Kelly side by side, implying some kind of tag team match players. Owens has his own history with Kelly, where he powerbombed him off the stage on a 2015 episode of Raw. Orton and Owens versus Logan Paul and Machine Gun Kelly at the next Saudi show confirmed. In one mark in the shoot column, though, this isn't the first time Orton has had a public spat with a rapper. Back in 2021, Soldier Boy had called pro wrestling fake, which prompted a lengthy back and forth debate with Orton, which included this post. Fake, right Soldier Boy. By the way, which one of yo baby's mummers do I send the bill to for making you relevant again? I assume they all own your ass. So who's cutting those checks? With photos of Drew McIntyre and Sheamus' scars from a match on Raw. And more famously, this RKO from out of Twitter. My dick taller than you, weighs more too. Go to bed, you f***ing infant. You're welcome for the boost. Go choke on a keyboard. Do you think Orton and Kelly really have backstage heat? Let me know in the comments because I'll be replying to people from out of nowhere. Which, which actually fits this time because this is about Randy Orton. In the BP era of WWE, before Paul, any number of things can potentially kill your career. Backstage heat with rappers, sneezing in front of the wrong person, and worst of all, having your name changed. After a successful run in NXT, Vince McMahon debuted Pete Dunne in March 2022 with the new name, Butch. He would portray a Scrappy-Doo style fighting character worse only in name than Shorty G. Now, wrestling as Pete Dunne again, he beat Xavier Woods and The Miz on Monday's Raw. Dunne will now wrestle in a four-way match on the 9th, with the winner becoming the number one contender to Bron Breaker's Intercontinental Championship. At the same time, though, Dunn is feuding with his former Brawling Brutes leader, Sheamus, who keeps calling him by his old Butch name. Following his win on Raw, Butch, I mean Dunn, revealed how bad that name was for him in a promo on YouTube. For Sheamus, that scum, man, to turn around and still call me Butch, to have a laugh at something that nearly killed my career. When I win that tournament and I have my hand lifted in the air, you can all call me something I approve of. Champion. Injuries are another way to derail your career, and it's been revealed that was the reason Bo Dallas disappeared from WWE for five years before his recent return as part of the Wyatt Six. His match on Monday's Raw wasn't just the in-ring debut of his Uncle Howdy character, it was his first full match in five years. And his father, Mike Rotunda, has written on Instagram explaining what happened during that time. Taylor actually broke his neck in October of 2019. He came home to heal, then COVID hit. Then he got in the best shape of his entire life, and then he was released in 2021. 
Another good way to get buried in WWE is good old-fashioned politics. Swerve Strickland signed a new AEW deal on Sunday, said to be one of the biggest in the company, and then main evented their biggest show of the year, All In, at Wembley Stadium, in one of the most emotional matches ever against Brian Danielson. It's a long way from where he was in WWE from 2019 to 2021. His hit row faction was drafted to the main roster in October 2021, and were baffingly released the next month. Now, in an interview with The Rich Eisen Show, Strickland has hinted towards what prevented him from having success in WWE. Political moves, just political moves, I can say. There are conflicting reports over whether a major change is coming to the way WWE run their talent system. Ahead of this Sunday's NXT No Mercy Premium Live event, WrestleVotes posted the following report. According to a source, there was an all-employee meeting today at WWE HQ in Stanford, hosted by Mark Shapiro. I'm told the biggest news to come out of the meeting is that the WWE Performance Center will be moving to Las Vegas in the near future. The Wrestling Observer seemingly backed this up, posting that a new Las Vegas developmental location could be replacing the Orlando Performance Center or could just be an additional venue. This is a huge upheaval, as the Performance Center has been in Orlando, Florida, training and developing wrestlers since it was first built in 2013. It's also where NXT hosts their weekly TV. It's yet another move in bringing the WWE and UFC closer together under their shared TKO ownership as Las Vegas is also where the UFC's training facilities are placed. Earlier this year, NXT even hosted their battleground event at the UFC Apex venue in Las Vegas. But following that first report, Fightful Selectors reported Shapiro did not make such an announcement, and was merely making a point that Vegas is a destination and that having a presence there is on the table. The Wrestling Observer double-checked with their sources and claimed WWE is denying the story and said Shapiro talked about growth of Vegas and headquarters there at some point, but not moving soon and no definite plan. WrestleVotes, however, stuck to their original report. Following up with, I've reached back out to the source after the follow-up from Sean Ross Sapp. They are still confident in our initial report about Vegas. I'm told also this is not an overnight thing and could take some time. So in the end, time will tell. Wrestling legend Sid Vicious sadly died on the 25th of August, and now his son Gunner has provided more details on his father's passing. He was known as Psycho Sid Vicious to the world, but to our family, he was simply Popper, the beloved grandfather. Sid was diagnosed with congestive heart failure in 2016, and atrial fibrillation, better known as AFib, around the same time. He was also given a pacemaker. In April 2021, he was diagnosed with stage 4 non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, which was linked to Roundup Weed Killer. Although he never told anyone about his fight against cancer, Sid lived his life to the fullest, attending the gym, boxing classes, making appearances for his fans, and, of course, t-ball games for the kids. He passed away peacefully in his bed, leaving behind a legacy of strength and determination. I've never met anyone with a fraction of the strength as my father. He truly was one of a kind. Thanks everyone for the uplifting words and love. We definitely feel it. We have received thousands of messages and are grateful for every one of them. I don't have time to reply, but I have read them all. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Showing what a generous soul Sid was behind the psycho character, Booker T has shared a story about how it was Vicious who got him and his brother Stevie Ray their breaks in WCW, where he even let them stay at his apartment while they were finding their feet. It was the anniversary of another wrestling legend's passing over the weekend, Bray Wyatt. Remember his legacy by watching our tortured genius of Bray Wyatt video essay now. Here's a clip. Across multiple characters, Bray told us that he was this charismatic cult leader, an unstoppable monster, a sympathetic but unhinged victim of some past trauma, and audiences bought into that despite the booking, despite the maggots, despite the vast amounts of mystery in a medium that thrives on the obvious. Bray swept us up in the palm of his hands, and even now, we are still following the breadcrumb trail and finding out how deep the rabbit hole can go. This is the legacy of Bray Wyatt.